Hey there, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel, and in this video, we're going to create an adventure. So I'm using the adventure scenarios uh, that are presented in the basic book of Moldway Basic BX. Um, same kind of information is in OSE if you're using that system. And what we're going to do is walk through this and create an adventure, right? Um, because I've done several of these, and I'll put links, uh, I'm, I'm kind of glossing over some of it so that these videos aren't tremendously long, repeating myself over and over again. So I've done a little bit of legwork up front to kind of make the beginning part a little shorter. If I go through this part and it's a little too quick and you watch the other video and you still don't understand it, please in the comments let me know where you'd like me to focus so I can cover that part more extensively. So um, yeah, let's get to it. So in the, I'm going to show you the book now, in the BX book, this is the basic book, on page B51, we have this section, it's in the Dungeon Master Information, and it talks about creating scenarios, choose a scenario. So I've been rolling, this is a uh, We've done a few videos now, and what I got uh, on this roll here was number eight, rescuing prisoners. So there's a lot of things you can do with that, right? And what it describes it as is, let's see if I can do this. Let's see if we make it a little smaller. Huh. There we go. Okay, valuable and important persons are being held prisoners by bandits, a tribe of orcs, or an evil magic user. The party sets out to rescue the prisoners because they have been hired to, expected reward, for a debt of honor, or for some other reason. Sometimes the player characters are only hired to guard an individual who is talking over the demands for the ransom. This scenario is the basis for a sample dungeon here in Haunted Keep. Okay, cool. Um, what I normally do, so then the next thing you do is you check your setting, and I rolled and I got a stronghold or town. So my first thought was, oh, bandits, negotiation, whatever, whatever. But then I thought, you know what? I got Medusa on the mind. I don't know why I've been thinking about it lately. I think because I was um, looking through the basic book, because as we're building these, I'm looking at all the monsters, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, a lot of my really favorite monsters are in the expert book. So when we get there, that's going to be fun. But one of my all-time favorite monsters is in the basic book, which is Medusa. So... In D&D, if you're new to this, Medusa is like a species, right? So it's a monster. You can be more than just one, a single person. So, but like the mythology, right? It's a female. She turns people to stone by looking at them. Snake hair, that kind of stuff. And if we look at the Medusa in the basic books, so let's take a quick look at this. Let's go to monsters. There's a cool little picture over in here. It's always good to go by the monsters with pictures because they're easy to find, right? So there she is, Medusa. Okay, so she's four hit dice, and we know that she turns people to stone and has poison uh, snake hair, so that's going to be tough. Uh, the lair, if we look at the number appearing, the one in parentheses is one to four, so a full lair of Medusa will be four, four Medusa. Um, if you see their, um, their other information here, the treasure type F, which we'll talk about in a second. And if we look at it, Medusa looks like a human female with live snake growing from her head instead of hair. A set of Medusa will turn a creature to stone unless the victim saves versus turn to stone. And it goes through all the stuff there. It doesn't actually talk too much about like their where they live, any of that kind of stuff. Like some of the monsters do, so you can work with that. So you could theoretically do this in a town and have like the Medusa running like a thieves guild kind of thing, like you know, with the hood and all that. But I thought, you know, classic loving the old Clash of the Titans movie, you know, I love the idea of like old ruins to be uh, explored. And since the B in BX really is about exploring dungeons. I didn't want to go too far astray from here. So we are going to actually be outside, but I'm going to set this up more like a dungeon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this ancient area that the Medusa uh, have formed a cult. This is my idea. And what they're doing is they are, of course, they turn people to stone, right? And they keep them as trophies. That's kind of what I'm doing. And what I'm thinking is that Perhaps a prince or a duke or a princess or a queen or whatever you want was out hunting. Uh, the the cult of the Medusa captured them or, you know, held up the hunting party to give the Medusa the ability to turn these people to stone. And they've now dragged the the, the statue back to the slayer. So now we've got the, the prisoner we're rescuing is not a person that you can just pick up. Well, well you could pick them up. You can't just grab them, right? You, got, you could say, hey, come with me. They are turned to stone. They are a statue. And... <laughs> which I thought could be really fun. So I've got some ideas in my head. I've got this cult of Medusa, which is probably just going to be normal people. Um, I've got this um, idea that the Medusa are capturing people. 
And the next step I wanted to do was figure out, I mean, I kind of have a rough idea and I thought, well, let me think how I'm going to, let's look at the the, the treasure. Because I always do that if I'm kind of still thinking about a scenario. And this time I'm going to do it a little different. Um, if you if you use uh, uh, OSE, right, so back to the OSE, um, they've got a lot of great um, generators online. I'll put a link to it um, in the description. And essentially, these generators are for NPC parties, for treasure and stuff like that. Let me show you. Um, so I'm on the treasure type one now. So for instance, we are in, the, we're using, a, this is a basic adventure. So I'm, I got basic clicked off. And then you can see all the different treasure types here. And what we would do is we know that she's treasure type F and we hit it, <laughs> not nothing, that would suck, right? Um, instead, that can happen. So this generates all that treasure real quick. I'll just do it a few times so you can see, you know. You know, there's different ones popping up. Look at that. That's that's a take. Twenty six thousand gold pieces, eight thousand gold pieces. This. So the first time I did it, <laughs> I got this one, which I actually just screenshotted. So I'm just going to go back to it. Um, and if we look at this, there's eight thousand gold pieces, which is a lot of gold. There's a staff of healing, protection scroll, medallion of ESP, potion of uh, demulation, and a cursed scroll. So there's a whole lot of gold, um, and the, what really stuck out to me was the medallion of ESP. Because I, I was thinking to myself, well, if there's going to be a cult of Medusa, how are they going to, um, you know, function? You can't look at Medusa, obviously, you turn to stone. So what I thought was maybe these people at the kind of the higher end of the cult tear their eyes out so they're blind. Um, but the high priest is going to want to actually interact with people and also with Medusa. So I, when I saw this, I said, well, medallion of ESP to let him read people's minds. Um, you know, so maybe that's how the Medusa talks to um, the, the the priest. So I thought I'd use that as kind of my basis. So I'm going to have some kind of priest, which could either be a cleric or a magic user. Um, probably magic user. I like to use sorcerers as, as bad guys in these things. So a uh, magic user that's running the cult. Um, we're going to have four Medusa as our bad guys. We've got a bunch of gold. And what I've decided is, instead of it just being piles of gold laying around, these people that are turned to stone and taken by the Medusa are going to be essentially, um, there's going to be, it's not so much a ransom, but more like a reward, right? So if the if the, the prince was taken, the queen might be like, I'm going to give you, you know, I, I'll give you 3,000 gold pieces if you can bring back my my son, you know, statue, and then the wizards can turn turn them back. Um, and maybe there's a several other people, you know, that are worthwhile. So what we'll say is that the statues will have a value, um, a ransom value, for lack of a better word, although, you know, probably from the position that I would go, the pieces aren't necessarily, like, ransoming them. They're bringing them back, like a reward for bringing them back. So it's going to be, it's going to add a little extra uh, drama because they're going to have to carry back statues. So that's something I have to think about. Um but at the same time, so it's like they can't just go in there, grab a sack of gold and run and be like, forget about it. They, if they want to actually collect the gold and the, all the experience points, because remember in BX, you don't get experience points for magic items, only for gold. So if they go in there and they just decided to grab some magic items and scoot, they won't get any of the experience points that they could possibly get for this, right? Which is up to 8,000. So that's kind of my base idea of how I want to do this. Now, like I said... Um, I want this to be in kind of a ruined area. That's what I kind of imagine what Medusa. So I also, I'm just going to skip my browser for a second. I did some some Googling. I had been to, to Turkey a long time ago and saw some some ruins, which I thought were really cool. So I just kind of Googled ruins in Turkey just to, to get my mind going. And I found this website. I'll put a link to it. Um, it's the, it says uh, eight, eight most interesting uh, ancient uh, ruins um, in Turkey. So I thought, well, I'll look at this to get some inspiration. And as I was kind of going through this, um, and you can see these are great. Sometimes you don't need like a map map. You can just kind of look to see what's there. But as I was going through this, what I saw, what I really liked was this, right? Because I thought, perfect. Imagine this bottom area filled with statues that are the, basically the ransom people. You've got all this land around that could be other stuff. And then, of course, you've got this almost Coliseum-ish kind of setup as well. So I thought this would be a cool way to as like the main base for the Medusa and then I started work. Then we're going to start working backwards. So that's kind of where I'm in now. This is kind of this is where I'm starting. Um, so let's go to my iPad so we can see what I wrote down here. Okay, so here's my iPad here. Again, I jotted down the things that I kind of we've already talked about a little bit. Stronghold or town, rescuing prisoners, four Medusas, treasure type F, all the things I said, the cult. So let's look at our actual monsters and see, like I'm thinking normal people, normal humans, is it called? But let's see, you know, maybe if there's something better or different. Let's go here to the BX. Okay, so we're looking at BX, and we're going to go up to 
N for normal human. There they are. Armor class 9, 1 to 4 hit points. They can use weapons. You know, they're basically normal humans, which is what I was thinking, right? They're basically part of a cult. But I wonder if that's too, you know, maybe they're not strong enough. Maybe what we should do is maybe look at something bandits or something. So let's go up to B. Okay, goblins. Uh, yeah, I don't want to use monsters in this. I, I think the Medusas are the monsters. So I want to definitely go with humans. Um, we just need to figure out what kind of humans we want to use. So where are our bandits? They're definitely in here. Bandit. Okay, so bandits are armor class 6, so a little bit better. They still use weapons. They're one hit dice, so a little bit more hit points. Um, they basically... Oh, they also have treasure. Treasure type A. So that might be interesting as well. Um, there's up to 30 in, in a gang. So assuming this is a cult, let's do a little combining here. So our bandits are, I'm going to go up here in my little book, bandits 30. Because remember, this is a third level adventure. Let's do bandits, right? And let's now also go back down. Oh, actually, while we're here, we've also got uh, Acolyte, which is a, uh, a first level cleric. Uh, but we're not going to use first level clerics. We're going to make like an NPC. So I'll leave that for now. Uh, let's see. So berserkers, that could be fun, right? But let's go bandits, and then let's go. Let's go with normal humans, because again, that'll give us different levels of toughness. Uh, okay. And I believe there was twenty in a group of normal humans. Yeah, normal human twenty. Now you might be saying that's a heck of a lot of bad guys, and you are right. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is that they may or may not have to encounter all of these things. This is basically going to be the whole existence of the cult. Like in many sword and sorcery, uh, you know, adventures, if you kill the Medusas, the cult's going to spread out and leave, right? You're probably not going to have to fight them all. Hopefully, you'll get they're going to flee. I mean, our morale of a normal human is only six. Bandits, I don't think, was very high either. Um, no, bandits also have treasure. So let's go here. They got treasure type A, which I think might actually be... Yeah, treasure type A has a high percentage of gold. So that might be uh, too much. For what we're doing here because our main monster is the the medusa so this isn't going to be the bandits lair it's going to be the medusa's lair so that's how we handle treasure types right so what we can do is go up to this and go they do have individual treasure but again i think it's going to be so minor that i'm not going to worry about it um let's go back up here if we look at the bandits we've got treasure type a is only found when encountered in the wilderness in their lair so their normal treasure type is you though if they're not in the lair, and if we go to normal humans, also you. So they all got treasure type U, and if I remember right, treasure type U is basically like individual treasure. Yeah, it's very small amounts of treasure. I'm not going to worry too much about that. If we want to add that in, we'll just kind of put something there. But, you know, again, you don't have to use it exactly the way it's written. you got to kind of work with what you got. So that is going to be the extent of our combats and monsters in this situation. And now let's take a look at our location and how we want to do this. Okay, so I sketched up this really basic map. <laughs> I decided it'd be fun to keep make this kind of like concentric circles, like building up onto a hill. So what we've got is three different areas. I, I can mark them out here. Let me bring this up so you can see. We've got this area in red, which is kind of like the outer ring. That's going to be like probably for the new recruits, that kind of stuff. We'll put the normal humans out there. Um, the blue ring in the center is going to be more tightly packed, like the buildings that are around the center of town. That's going to be where the bandits live. And then in the center part where the yellow is, is going to actually be the the Colosseum place where the Medusas will be. And what we're going to do is, instead of like mapping this out very precisely, we're going to create kind of like a mini game for each of the different sections. And that way we can kind of walk through and say, okay, this is what we're going to get. So let's take a look for a second at um, the normal humans. Okay, so normal humans typically are, again, there could be up to 20 of them, but they come in groups of one to four. We're going to say four because a patrol would never be one. That doesn't make sense. Um, we're gonna, they can be armed with any weapon, and I think out here we're going to give them bows because these people have not had their eyeballs cut out yet. They're kind of new recruits, right? So we're going to create a little kind of, uh, we'll call it a wandering monster slash uh, mechanism to walk through. And what we're going to do is we're going to have, okay, this is outer ring. And I've kind of jotted down some ideas here, so let's take a peek at this. We'll finish it up. Okay, so outer ring must make three make progress three times to make it through the ring uh, two to, or two times and defeat the Medusa, because there may be Medusa out here. I'm going to roll a d6 each turn. On a one or two, an account, you encounter patrol four normal humans armed with short bows, ten arrows each. That's going to be important because PCs are going to want to collect the arrows and stuff. 
And after two rounds of fighting, make another check ignoring results three to five. So what that means is result three means no progress. They just kind of get lost, basically. Four to five, they make progress, right? So they get about a 33% chance or so each round of moving forward. Um, and then number six, they'll encounter the Medusa that lives in this section or that's in charge of this section. So that means if they get into a fight with these four normal humans and it drags out, there's more of a chance that they might encounter more, you know, it might they might start piling up on them. Uh, assuming that they make it through this section, the next section, inner ring, this is where the bandits are going to be. This is going to be more tightly packed. It's going to be a little more complicated. They're going to have to make, make progress uh, five times, we'll say. And we're going to do the same kind of thing. One and two. In fact, we'll copy this. Uh, so they're going to uh, run into an encounter of bandits. Let me kind of, I'm going to scroll over here in my basic book to see what the deal is with bandits again. For sure, no, I don't know that when we first looked at. Okay, they're in groups of one to eight. So again, I don't think I want to have only one by themselves. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll do two to eight instead. So we're going to say these guys are two to eight. Bandits. Uh, they're going to be armed with uh, short swords. Okay. Same deal. I have two rounds of fighting. Another check. Um, these bandits, I'm going to call them blind bandits because we're going to actually make a little stat block for them. Okay. Th again, three, no progress. Four to five, they make progress. And then six, they encounter the Medusa. Okay, so again, it's going to be the same process of going through this. It's going to be important when you're running this to, you know, add as much flavor and stuff as you want. So throw down some keywords for yourself. I'll probably put some stuff in here too. But basically, you want to be able to, to talk about the, the streets, what people find, you know, and let, let them kind of play out a little bit. Get them involved in um, this, the location. You know, even if it's not mapped out ahead of time, you can kind of create it as you go. Now, if players do smart things like climb a building and look around, then maybe they can make progress automatically. You got to judge that as a DM, right? This is the kind of things that we do here. So once we do that, then we then we enter the we call center stage. So in the center stage area, this one I'm going to do a little differently because I want this one to be like a a, a, a maze, some actually a maze of statues okay and what we're going to do is we're going to go roll 2d6 each turn and we're going to do a 2d6 chart so those are typically two uh three to five six to eight because remember the 2d6 has like a curve to it it's not i think exactly a bell curve but it's it's like that um and then 12. And what we're going to do is we're going to make two. Um, I'm going to do this a little bit interesting. I had this idea as I was just doing this. Number two is going to be surprised by Medusa. Okay. So if they, if they, and, and again, I'm going to have the players roll this. So every round I will, I'll go around my table and we're going to say, okay, first player roll 2d6. Okay. Second player roll 2d6. And we're going to do like that, right? The 12, which is on the other end of the scale is going to be, Surprise, a Medusa. Okay. Um, three to five is going to be encounter Medusa. Six to eight, nothing happens. Um, and again, you know, nothing happens, meaning they're maneuvering around the maze of people. And 9 through 12 encounter, which we call him, cult leader. Or Medusa, if 
cult leader is has been defeated. Okay. So this is going to be kind of like an interesting thing. Now, what we can do is we're going to have a nothing happens chart. And this is going to basically be our um, we'll come up with six things here. Um, see shadow of the corner of PC's eye. Here, a scream in the distance. Flock of birds takes off in a scared flight. Uh, let's see. Sounds of footsteps in the distance. Let's see. Smell of rotted flesh, which will be weird because it's Medusa's, right? And uh, sound of hissing snakes. Oh, you know what? I like the sound of hissing. I want to get rid of the rotted flesh because maybe that doesn't fit. I thought it'd be a red herring, but instead I'm going to say harmless snakes scurry across the ground. Yeah. Now we never want to set them up so that they have to fight the Medusas, right? Although that'll kind of beat the goal. But at the same time, you know, we want to give them a chance of finding the, the prince and blah, blah. So the way I'm going to do that is anytime doubles. are rolled on uh, on the 2d6 party you will encounter a recognizable statue uh roll 1d6 on uh, one to two, it is the person they are looking for on a otherwise a lesser ransom uh, reward NPC. Right. That way, if they find statues, they can, you know, they can drag them out, whatever, whatever they want to do it. Um, all right. So, again, I'm just working on the mechanics here because I think this is the what, what's going to be important here. And I, and I will when I play test this and even before then, I'll start to really flesh out like how things feel and, you know, how things look and how you want to do that. But when you're first making an adventure, I always like to get all the mechanical stuff down because I feel like a lot of the imagery is just the stuff that you kind of depends on your group how you want to interact with them keeping it a little bit looser i think is just a, a, is nicer but let's just kind of look at what we've got and see what else we kind of need to make this a functional adventure and we'll fill that in now so rescuing prisoners so let's actually we talked about this let's write this up a little bit so let's roll right we're gonna keep this rolling so i'm gonna go uh, the prisoner that's missing, I'm going to roll a d12. Uh, high is going to be a female, low is a male. Okay, four, so male, so prince. So he's the, it's going to be a prince because I feel like that's always a good thing. Um, the prince. And again, it depends on your world, obviously. Has been taken by the cult of stone. Let's say let's say at least half the stuff is four thousand gold piece reward for return, and in this case it will cause experience points. Sometimes people don't count like rewards and payments experience points, but I think in this case it really should. Um, 
another, let's say, there's another 4,000 gold pieces, but nobody's going to be worth nearly that much. Let's say another six people are also missing with rewards totaling. Uh, 4,000 gold pieces. Okay. So there could be a potential of 8,000 gold pieces here um, in our setup. Um, it's in a ruin. Ancient ruin outside the king's king's hunting ground. Okay. There are, okay, we have those notes. Okay, so we need to, let's do our, our priest. Okay, so going back to this. Okay, so along with the treasure type stuff, we've got uh, NPCs here. We could do by class and level. Let's say a third level uh, cleric. And we'll give a chance of magic items. And we might want to create one or two of these. This is going to be a main character, so I'm not just going to take what I get. We'll kind of look, because, I mean, I, you could also just make a character, you know, just roll up yourself. Um, okay. He's, wow, okay. He's got plate mill and shield. Wow, this guy's tough. He's got a sling. Um, he's chaotic. That actually works for us. A ring of animal control, which is nice. Uh, cause light wounds and darkness for his spells. So we can actually just go uh, copy to clipboard. And what we can do here is, so now he's got, um, I mean, he's got a ring of animal control. He's got to have an animal with him, right? So let's give him a wolf. He's in control. Of a wolf. Okay. Oh, he also has, by the way, let's go back to our treasure that we had before. He's also got um, the medallion of ESP. The rest of the Medusa treasure will divide up, right? So we've got a staff of healing, um, a protection scroll, a potion. Okay, so each of this four Medusas, each one will have a magic item, a random magic item. And you know what, I'm not going to assign them because those aren't things a Medusa would use in combat. So I'm going to actually put down here. Actually, I'll do it up here. We got Medusa's four. Each will have one magic item. Determine randomly. I'll just say one magic item. And then, I mean, obviously. Okay, so the magic items I have is Staff of Healing, which, by the way, is a really good magic item. Uh, protection Scroll. Uh, it's Protection from Elementals. Uh, potion. If you want a really tiny Medusa. Which, I mean, <laughs> could be pretty awesome. Diminution, and then Cursed Scroll. Okay. Okay, so let's determine what the Cursed Scroll does now, because... Why not, right? All right, so if we go to our basic book again, right? Let me go to magic items, scrolls. Okay, let's see, scrolls. Cursed scroll right here. Unfortunately, when any writing on a cursed scroll is looked at, the reader will immediately be cursed. It's up to the DM to make each object curse. Here's some examples, and there's six of them. Here we go. Four. The reader loses one. Oh, ouch. That is a terrible, terrible. But you know what? It is the way it is. Ouch. But you know what? If they get all these magic items, that staff of healing. So that makes up for it, I guess. If you don't like that, you can always change it to whatever you want. Give them some other kind of curse. 
that can be a little tough, but we are, we're trying to go with the rolls here as much as possible to see where what we would actually end up with. Okay, so we've got a total of 30 bandits. Uh, 20 normal humans. All right, we're going to... Okay, so let's make a deal with the... Okay, it's okay. Bandits. We're going to do our blind bandits here. have torn out their eyes to be able to live with the Medusa have become custom to this and can still fight because typically te technically in bx if you are blinded you cannot fight that's basically can still fight comma but at a minus two to hit okay and the normal humans are totally fine okay that's it simple enough right we've got a little bit of flavor something interesting going on Let's go to the iPad where I just wrote all that. And again, let's go through this again. We've set up the thing. The prince has been captured. We've got the Medusa. Um, you know, I'll, I'll number these. That way it'll be understandable that you're supposed to roll it. Again, I usually make the players do this. So if they slay one of the Medusas and they search the body, I'll be like, roll a d4. If they roll something that's already been chosen, I'll either just take the next one up, is what I usually do, or have them roll again. Okay, so Cult of Stone, they got the leader. We need a name for the leader. I'll leave them unnamed for now, but uh, if you want to put a leader's name in the comments, go for it. Um, they've got a sling or they have the spell. So they've got the ring animal control. He's got darkness. He's got cause light wounds as his spells, which is pretty neat. And then we're going to basically have them go through this process, right? When they enter the, the outer ring, they're going to be re rolling every round or return, I should say. Um, until they get three successes that move them closer to the, the end. If they encounter stuff in the way, they'll fight, right? Because thing, most things are going to be hostile here. With same deal in the in the central ring. And then when they get to the center part, they're going to have to go through essentially a maze. So a lot of this is going to just be kind of randomized. We don't need the hardcore maps for this. Everything's going to be like rolling. I definitely encourage that you have the players roll um, to, to, to make it more interesting for them. And from there, you're basically good to go. Nice and simple, um, doesn't require a lot, fear of the mind, um, and yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with this. What what happens if the players don't rescue? They can, you know, they can certainly bail out. You, you can make this work however you want. I'm designing these primarily as one-shots. You know, I'm designing these primarily as one-shots so that, you know, the group is going to want to go to the thing or whatever, but if this is part of your campaign and clearly... The player characters don't want to do it or whatever. That's totally fine as well. They can go in there, get some magic items. They could save one person. They could save nobody. They could kill the Medusas. They could not kill the Medusas. All this is up in the air. You don't have to do the thing, right? You don't have to go there and kill the Medusas because that's what's on the, the, the agenda, if you will. And that's one thing to remember when you're running these kind of adventures. You got your basic concept. What they're there for is rescuing this prince. If they can figure out a way to get there and get the statue of the prince out, without having to fight anybody, that's 100% fine. So they'll be third level, which means they're going to have some uh, access to spells and stuff, so they should be a little tougher. So this probably will not actually be that difficult at all. Um, it's going as long as they don't get bad bad luck. Bad luck, they'll return to stone. So they're going to have plenty of hit points. The, the fact that they're fighting the bandits and stuff, that should not really be a problem for them. What will be a problem, or could be a problem, is if they encounter the Medusas and they're surprised. That's where you're going to have an issue. Okay, so we played through the adventure, and I've got a few little notes here. I will put a link to the adventure. The, I'll put a card if I can, but I'll also put it in the description. So you guys, if you guys want to see the actual play, it's about two hours long, and you can see how we worked our way through this. But I made a few changes um, before I played it. I typically do this anyways, but I thought this would be a good way to do it. I'll add it to this video. That way you guys can see. So anyways, the, one of the very first things that I realized was that um, I needed to um, work out the, uh, the stats, right? So let me just show you my notes again. This, this is, um, I didn't do this when we we're doing it live because it just takes time. So what I do whenever I'm doing one of these adventures is I put, you can see here, right? I basically put the stats for the the Medusa and also for the, the others um, in as I went. That makes things go a little quicker. The other thing I realized was that the priest has a ring of animal control and rereading it, it doesn't look like it's kind of permanent. You have to concentrate on it. So I changed um, 
the the wolf to basically be leashed uh, with the muzzle. Um, it's being kept against its will. So again, if the if the party somehow snuck up on the cleric, they might find the wolf, uh, you know, and cut it free. It would have just ran away. Uh, the cleric would use its first move to use the ring to control it. So that's kind of how I worked that out. So it works more with the rules. Um, the other thing that I discovered was that my my process of going through with the rolling and moving worked really well. They were able to get through uh, pretty easily, rolling, and it added some tension, so all that worked out really well. Real simple narration, let them role play and stuff. But, and I don't want to, no spoilers here, but I think form reduces is too much. So then I thought, well, maybe I'll go back and revamp the treasure. And then I noticed that when I actually looked at this, because actually I was asked a question about this, um, if we look here at the BX book, this is in the uh, the treasure section, right? Treasure. Right here, I highlighted it. Adjustments to treasure. And I've talked about this before. When there's fewer than a full layer, you adjust the treasure down. However, it does say, well, I'll read the whole thing. The layers of most human-like monsters contain at least the number of creatures given as the wilderness number appearing, the number in parentheses. An encounter with less than a full layer should yield less treasure. On the other hand, if one to four is the number appearing, even one will have the normal amount of treasure, no adjustment necessary. Well, Medusa number appearing in layer, one to four. So I think one Medusa is going to be the way I'm going to do this. So I'm revamping it to have one Medusa, which is more than enough, <laughs> even for a third level party, because saving throws, remember, are rough in OSR games. So those are the kind of the changes I made. I, I, I went in and I added the stats for the creatures, I, so it's easier for me to run off the fly. I went in and I, uh, I'm i going to reach down to one Medusa, and I also switched up the magic items slightly. I also set it up so that the first Medusa that they encounter, which in this case would be the only Medusa, that once we change it, will be the one with the Staff of Healing, because I realized after going through all those combats, the characters will be a little beat up. So, okay, so what do you guys think? Let me know how you're liking these. There's a few more of these scenarios. <laughs> there's 10 total, right? I think this is the fourth one I've done. So there's a bunch of these. I'm going to continue to do them if people are interested. Do you want to see other variations on like not actually going into the dungeon? Do you want me to jump to expert and try to do some hex crawly stuff? What do you guys want to see in future adventures? Let me know. I always appreciate the feedback. Be sure to subscribe, ring the bell if you haven't already, so you get the notifications. And I'll see you next time.